stage where we're ready to start sewing up our practice laceration. This video is about how to tie these ends together after you've put the suture in. We've replaced our pig's foot with a practice setup used for learning the mechanics of tying knots. Here I'm using a SIG 226 clip as an anchor and a shoestring. To begin, cross the shoestring over and form an X. Then, take your fingers in a pincer movement and put them through the circle created. They'll show up on the opposite side and then grasp one end of the string. In this first movement, you'll pull your fingers underneath and towards you to create the first throwdown. The second throwdown will have to go in the opposite direction in order for the knot to lay down in the square position. So again, we cross the lines, and this time we bring the fingers toward us in a pincer movement, and then push the string through this circle in the opposite direction. Grabbing it, we'll see that when we tie it down, it'll lay down into a nice square knot. If you don't do a square knot, if you end up with a granny knot or slip knot, then the suture may fail by slipping apart from itself when tension is placed. For instance, if we were to have made a slip knot accidentally in this pig's foot, after we tie it, what will happen is the knot will slip. It didn't in this particular case, but it should slip out accidentally as you see here. The nice thing about this particular suture material is that it won't slip very far. We're using a Vicro or braided material at this point. And so the braids within the material itself catch the other material and help lock the knot. If we're using a fishing line type monofilament suture, then when you make a slip knot, the knot will slip much easier away and out when there's tension put on it. If you're not sure whether or not you made a square knot after you put in your suture in someone, then what you'll have to do is put in knot after knot after knot. We've been using a braided material, Vicro, another braided material that's commonly available is silk, and when you run your fingers down it, you can feel notches in it. Those notches help lock the suture. But what if you're using a mama filament, like nylon, well, these are very slippery sutures. And because of that, your knot tying has to change a little bit. That is to say, on your first throw, you're going to have to find a way to really cinch it down tightly so that it doesn't slip and you don't end up with something called an air knot. You'll know you have a monofilament when you run your fingers across it and it feels completely smooth like fishing line does. In instances like that, You'll want to change your technique slightly in order to secure your knot down tighter. Again, we'll start by crossing our suture material, our shoelace, putting our index and thumb together, pushing those out away from us, grasping the free end, and then bringing it through. But instead of tightening it down at this stage, we're going to repeat the maneuver. Our pincer movement will go out away from us, grasp the end of the suture, and once again, bring it back toward us. When we cinch it down, you'll see that the knot stays reasonably tight, and there's no air knot. An air knot occurs if after putting one of these in, the suture loosens up like this, a second knot is placed over the top of it, and underneath the knot, there's room or air. If this happens, then the two skin edges held by these portions of the suture will separate, and you won't bring them together nicely, as you'd like to. The reason we bring the wound edges together nicely is so that they'll heal faster. This knot would do very little for us or for healing.